Hey, it's Jim. Today we're going to talk about three things that are going to take the handling and experience on your Zero 10X to another level, make it more enjoyable, probably safer, uh, just better, closer experience to what the scooter can really feel like. So I'm going to jump into what we need. I'm going to go right into it, buzz through here, and uh, show you the three things I think you should do. Oh, got the tools of trade there on the deck. We basically need a set of Allen wrenches, which is a two and a half, three, four, and five primarily for what we're doing here. Um, a little magnet tray is always nice for put, putting bolts and washers in. Um, of course, you need your key there to turn on your scooter. Uh, I'm using a spanner wrench for uh, one of the items, and you could also use a pair of channel locks or vice grips um, and a little shop towel. All right, first thing I'm going to talk about, so these are not in an order of importance. I think you should do all three of these if you're doing any, honestly. Uh, the folding clamp. Uh, one, you can upgrade to a rugged clamp. Um, and they come with a shim like this that goes inside of here. This shim, to me, is actually the best part of the rugged clamp, um, even though the rubber clamp rugged clamp itself is nice and has a thicker wall i think this shim is really what makes a difference so i'm going to tell you two things i do to the the clamp area first one i find that these both the backside nuts and the clamps kind of get in the way of each other so what i do is i just take one of them doesn't matter which and i flip it Probably seems like a very simple thing, but I find it really does help. You don't get quite as much resistance from the pieces and you can kind of get a better, I think a better side clamping force. Okay, well I'm in the same area here. Show you what the shim does. The shim basically sits right down in here. You take this off and it takes up the space in here. So on some models of these kind of stems, and I think some of the even old Zero 10X models, there was a grub screw right in here that would push down and basically work like the same type of shim. But over time it'd vibrate, it would move, and it would lose its position. Uh, this particular clamp has two little grub screws in the front. They are three, three millimeters. And you can feel when you kind of put this up flush, and I'm holding it, I'm holding the stem all the way towards the camera. And I'm just turning these up until they make contact. And you'll feel when they make contact and then they start to push on it. I'm just going to that contact point and then I can snug these up. And the nice thing when they're posing like this, you, can't, you don't have to use too much pressure, which you shouldn't do anyway. Um, and you can kind of, they kind of work each other into a little better spot in my mind um, than when they're the other direction. So that, that feels pretty good in there. So clamp, done. Step number two, adjust that suspension. You got adjustable suspension, you might as well use it. So uh, this little section on top you can see there are threads um, if you turn this clockwise it tightens the spring it pushes the spring down if you turn it counterclockwise it takes off the tension of the spring makes it looser so what i do is this spanner winch wrench works really well for this i have already adjusted this one it's the first thing i do with any of these scooters that i have just grab two points on it keep the fork from moving oopsie just grab, grab with the, the spanner tooth on the edge here, and you're just giving a little turn. Now what I would do is I would take this wrench and I would do a little turn and I would ride. I would do a, I'd ride up and down the block because like most, most people are gonna find you will like, you're not gonna have the same tension. You're gonna kind of like something a little different. So you might want the front and rear a little bit differently set up. Um, you can go to the full point of lockout. I don't recommend that. It doesn't, it kind of takes away a lot from the, the potential ride quality of the 10X. So, just a suspension. Okay. First thing we're going to do here, we're going to get our handlebars straightened out. 
You will see right here, this is the correct orientation of the voltmeter and the dual eco blah, blah, blah keypad deal. A lot of base model Zero 10Xs, Apollos, Varlas that share this platform have these flipped for whatever reason. You can say this indentation is made to sit on the grip that way. And correspondingly, so is a voltmeter. A lot of times they're flip-flopped. So you're having to reach further for your keypad and it doesn't matter as much with the key because there's a lot, but it's actually kind of resting right in this curve section and sometimes has issues staying in place. I'm gonna quickly show how you would take these off if you were to need to flip-flop your voltmeter and your keypad here. First thing you do, I'm gonna take it just on one side. You would take off your grip with four millimeter wrench. With the hydraulic brakes, it's also a four millimeter. With the mechanicals, it's a five millimeter single bolt. With the hydraulics, it's two bolts. Just to make it easier for cable tension on this one, I recommend just taking these all the way out. And you'll notice here, you're gonna run out of cable pretty quick. So the solution from that is just like when you got your Zero 10X or your like look look alike, um, you had to put on this stem top. So go ahead and loosen the stem. That way you can slide the bars and give yourself slack. So you can move the bars that way, pull this off, do the same thing on this side. On the on the uh, throttle, all you need to do is take out, loosen off these bottom three millimeter bolts so you can slide it off. Um, and the keypad here is also a three, three millimeter. The voltmeter is a two and a half millimeter. So slide the grips off, take your things off, flip them, put them back together. So I'm gonna quickly throw this back together and show you now what I would say the real key part is getting your handlebars dialed in. Uh, you can tilt these handlebars a little bit if you would like them to be a little closer towards you. This is also a good time to do that if you maybe decided you wanted a little different angle. The key on these top of the stems is you really want to have the same space of gap all the way around. And like lug nuts on a car, to properly do that, you kind of go either a zigzag pattern or a circular pattern. And each time it will kind of tighten up a little bit more, but you're trying to get all the spacing to be about the same. So it's putting even pressure down. Uh, this is a very important thing to get tight enough because if you've had the sensation of the handlebars twisting while you are riding, or usually when it's here, you're coming to an abrupt stop, it's not a great feeling. All right, so I'm gonna do this just to show you the other thing that I think is key out here on your handlebars. One is position your brake levers. There's two considerations for that. One, I personally, this is all personal, so I like to have my brakes a little down past the bar. That's just comfortable for me. So put them where you want them, then just make sure they're nice and tight and into place. Now to get your other things associated tight, a lot of times the brake is obstructing like it is on the key voltmeter, that screw. So what I will do is move this out of the way so you can get to your, kind of hold your key voltmeter where you want it. Get that tightened down. Then you can return that brake to where you decided you liked it. The other thing you can do on brakes, on these brake levers while you're in here, if you have the hydraulic levers. In the inside portion here on hydraulic levers is a two millimeter screw that just allows you to change the position of the lever. So you can bring it in closer, further away, I kind of like that. Um, so just put it, you know, get this, get this all tailored to where you want it. That's the key with this part. I'm gonna repeat the same process over on this side, except I got one more item in here. So I kind of know where I want my, that. And I gotta get a three millimeter. So again, to get to this keypad, I need to move the brake out of the way.
And I'm kind of eyeballing this, so I might have to move it a little more in the, down the road. And I'm throwing another tool on the ground. Seems to be what I like to do. And then last thing is to kind of put your throttle where you want it. Some people like it way down there. Well, that's really difficult to do beyond a certain point unless you also wrap your brakes down there a lot. So I actually kind of like a little higher, just the way I am. I like to be able to see it um, and then put it where you want it and tighten it down. Make sure, give everything a check. Make sure everything's good and go for a ride. All right, so you put your back in your rubber plugs or if you have a bar in mirrors or you have some uh, bar in turn signal lights like I'll be doing a review on pretty soon, put those in. Grab your key and ride. That's why you got this thing to get out there and ride it. And uh, the more it's tailored to you, the more you're going to want to ride it. So again, just a quick rehash of these three things that I think you need to do. That is adjust the suspension, get, get a handle on your clamp, and get a grip on your handlebars. Get those th three things done, you're really going to be having the best experience you can have on the Zero 10X. And I also am doing a second video, it's, it was too long to do uh, in this video, adjusting the headset tension. That's another problematic area of the Zero 10X. Um, but assuming your headset's good, those th these three things I gave you should really help you out. So thanks, please leave comments, subscribe, like, all that stuff. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like to see on the 10Xs, I'm happy to help you out. Thanks. Catch the wave, feel.